Hey, what's up everyone? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound and as promised, we are going to deliver for you a midweek Monday market report. This time for the week ending March 14th, 2021. Uh, there's really no rhyme or reason as to why I swapped up the days a little bit. Uh, but, you know, this is a nice little break in the action for, you know, to kind of uh, slice your week in half. Something to enjoy as you're, uh, you know, going through your day. Um, but, man, I tell you what, this is probably one of the largest report days I've done in quite some time. I mean, they've all been pretty huge just based on where the market has been going. And, um, of course, there's a lot of investor money. There's a lot of registry money floating around out there. And we can even throw in some uh, just general typeset collecting money as well. I mean, it's all over the map. And people are looking for some of the more premier, highest grade, top population coins. So as you guys know, the Monday Market Report is focused primarily on post-1900 modern U.S. coins. All coins are going to be graded. Generally, they're highlights from the previous week's like big auction um, activity. Uh, you know, things like Heritage Auctions throws out some pretty big auctions, you know, on occasion. Stax Bowers, Legend Morphe, there's quite a few of them. Now, Great Collections has always been kind of like the, uh, the reliable week-in, week-out marketplace uh, for some of the nicest coins. And, and it, thankfully, they are out there. They're, they're, they have a huge chunk of the market share in terms of numismatics auctions. Uh, so we're going to take a look at Great Collections again. And I'm going to say... It says a lot when, when you've grown over the, you know, the course of the last like five, six years as great collections has, especially when you're up stiff up against stiff competition like eBay and even heritage auctions, I would say that's a pretty big deal. OK, and this week is kind of like the uh, the cresting point for how successful great collections and Ian Russell has been for for the number of years that they've been around i mean they are still i would say one of the more relatively newer um go-to spots for uh, some of these high-end coins but this past week we are going to talk about a few selections from a huge lincoln cent collection that sold in excess of three hundred thousand dollars as a matter of fact i'm probably sure it's more closer to 400k than it is 300 a lot of five to ten thousand dollar coins in this collection, uh, from what I can gather, um, it was never a registry set, so that's pretty impressive in itself. This is just a really nice collection of Lincoln cents, and the person um, that collected these things, they wanted the finest graded coins that they could possibly get their hands on. So we're going to take a look at that. Along all else, man, there's a few other big bangers in this week's Monday Market Report. We're going to talk about that as well. All right, so as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If this is your first time here, please do so. Um, hit that good old bell for instant notifications. Uh, you, you know the whole spiel. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first mega sale of the week. And that's going to be this guy right here. Uh, we don't talk about 69S double die obverse FS101 that often, but however, there's been a few of them that have sold in the last few weeks. So all of a sudden, some of these prominent coins are coming into the marketplace uh, in terms of the 69S DDO. Uh, seeing three or four of them come out here in the last four weeks is, is pretty unusual, and I think it has everything to do with the market. The market is up 15 to 20% from a year ago so that's important you know some people will see that as just a prime opportunity to move a coin for a little bit more than what it normally would this same time last year all right this one right here nice coin very representative of the variety you know however you know it is a pcgs mint state 63 red brown example um as far as i appeal it's not the most attractive coin all right, I would say it's probably an ugly duckling mid-state coin. You guys can see like, you know, the, the carbon spotting, the staining, things of that nature on this example here. It probably just passed the eye test through PCGS before it became a details-grade coin. I'll be absolutely honest. But even a coin that looks like this 
sold for $28,254.38. Again, a very nice coin. If you're looking for this type of variety, this would be a relatively good example. And for those of you that are still searching for these coins, keep in mind, there are a number of them still out there. All right. So this is a really great chase coin for, you know, coin roll hunters of the penny variety. All right. So keep that in mind. Very, very prominent coin and life changing money as well. All right, so this is going to be the first of uh, the Bellwood collection. Okay, this is the big Lincoln Cent collection that that brought in between three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars this past week. Um, Fifty six D. Now I could have done a whole list on the Bellwood and end up being like a fifty coin video, but we can't do that. Um, too long. And if I talk about pennies for the whole video, some of you probably lose interest. So what I did was I picked out a number of them, uh, some of the more, I guess, recent, more newer coins. You guys are, are welcome to go on Great Collections website and take a look at all the, all the other coins from the Bellwood collection. But we have a 56D. This one, of course, top grade PCGS Mint State 67 Plus, full red. And I will say that every single Bellwood coin uh, from this past week is CAC certified, all green bean. So I'm not going to repeat myself every single time with the CAC cert, uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know, if you see that CAC green sticker on the slab label, they do know it's uh, double certified. All right, so this one right here sold for $1,693.12, and I'll just be straight up honest with you. A lot of the, I would say, 1930s to the 1958 uh, Lincoln cents that are high graded and sold from Bellwood are probably more than likely going to end up in a registry or another high end Lincoln cent collection. Um, I would say a lot of these probably are not the best investment coins just be based off of how modern they are. Um, there's always a chance that more of these will show up. Someone sends out like three or four 56 D's. They come back as 67 plus. I mean, once we load up those population figures at the top grade, what does that do to the price of the coins? Well, they begin to rupture, all right? They'll drop, so keep that in mind. And that's the only reason why I highly do not recommend investing in these coins. But as far as, you know, registry set, a points-based system, that's all well and good. But you gotta know that usually the coins that you buy into a registry set will either flatline or drop a little bit. But the market is just ripe for these type of coins to come out in the marketplace. All right, so the second one that we have here is the 1955 Lincoln. This one, of course, is not the double die obverse. Uh, you can just plain tell on this one. Um, it does have what you know what we call the poor man's double die, and that's just a little die deterioration uh, on the obverse. Uh, this one right here is a PCGS Mid-State 67 Red, and this one sold for $1,012.50. So every single Lincoln cent we're going to talk about through the end of this particular denomination are all Bellwoods. I just wanted to make that clear. I didn't say it at first, but I'm going to reiterate to you. All right, we have a 53D here, and this is a PCGS Mid-State 67 Plus Full Red. This is also a top-graded coin. This one brought home a staggering $4,277.25. We also have a Philadelphia version of the same date. Uh, this one here is a PCGS Mid-State 67. So it's not a plus, but keep in mind Philadelphia minted coins of the 50s are just ridiculously tough to get to that 67 level just because of quality control. It just wasn't that good during the 50s. Um... As you can see, this one, probably my least favorite out of the bunch that you'll see. Uh, this one here sold for $2,819.25. All right, we have a 52 as well. This one is a Mint State 67 Red, same as the 53 that we saw previous. As you can see, this is the quality you would expect of a high-end Philadelphia coin. Uh, again, really tough. Uh, the strikes are generally mushy. Uh, sometimes, in like this case, you see a little bit of a uh, die clashing here under Lincoln's chin. This particular example sold for $1,944. All right, so here's another Bellwood piece, but we've gotten away from the 50s, thankfully, because I could have put like another five 1950s coins in there, but I didn't want to seem redundant. 
This is a coin I love searching for, and it seems to me that more people are having success finding these. It's a 1943 D over D RPM. Okay, this is the Cherry, Pick Cherry Pickers Guide variety. Very, very awesome variety to look for. You can see the secondary D is southwest of the primary. Um, very strong. Uh, this is a coin that I have effectively and successfully cherry picked on a few occasions with the naked eye. Like I forgot my, uh, you know, my magnifier. And generally I would say you would need a magnifier for varieties. Um, it's just almost like one of those must have tools to add to your arsenal as you go through these type of coins. But this is such a high end example, PCGS mid state 67. Um, this is one of the more sought after varieties in the Lincoln Cent series, and especially when it's this high a grade, you know, it gives a lot of notice to the coin. This one right here is sold for $8,218.12. And speaking of really cool varieties, we also have a PCGS Mid-State 66 Full Red of a 1936 Type 1 Double Die Obverse. Okay, so this is the FS101. There's also a 102, which is a Type 2. And a 103, which is uh, the least desirable double die offer out of the three. But they're all fantastic. But when you have one of this particular grade, again, people want this, right? Um, without the aid of actually a close-up, you can see the doubling really well on the date, on Liberty. And you can even see it in the motto, In God We Trust. All right, so this is, again, a very nice premier high-end uh, variety uh, that everybody looks for. Uh, this one can act as a, an investment piece or it could go into a variety set kind of um, deal or maybe just into a general purpose Lincoln registry. I mean, this one has a lot going for it. And because of that, it sold for $10,125. And this is the final Bellwood coin we're going to talk about. Again, I personally invite you guys to go on Great Collections website, take a look at all the other offerings of Bellwood from last week. You guys will be floored. All right, so we're going to jump over to uh, the next size denomination. That's nickels. And then we have uh, a surpriser here for you, a 1991D, uh, Jefferson Nickel. I mean, this thing is like brand spanking new. You know, people look at this like, are you kidding me? This thing is on the list. Well, yeah, it's a relevant coin along with any other Jefferson Nickel um, that is that is a key component to a high-end registry, all right? So this one right here, PCGS Mid-State 67, full steps. This one has very sharp-looking steps there, as you can see. Very nice coin. Um, yeah, probably not the atypical coin to send to a grader. I mean, you got to have a nice pair of you-know-what to send something like this to PCGS, only because it's like, it's tough. It's tough to get the full steps if if they're not squared up the way that this one is. This one here sold for $2,025. Yeah, that's a lot of money for such a modern coin. But again, I've seen some stranger things. that This one is probably right in the wheelhouse of this market. Same with this one, 1982 Philadelphia. These are uh, typically known to have less than desirable strikes. Uh, you can just kind of see the flow lines and patterns on not only the obverse, but the reverse of this coin. You got some dye deterioration in there. I mean, that's just the sign of the times. However, this is, again, another registry set coin. Um, Mid-State 66, full stepper. Uh, whether you want to agree with it or not, I mean, you know, PCGS grades full steps on these coins based on the deep recessed channels of the steps and not the, uh, the the higher relief parts of the coin. So keep that in mind. So if you see like a nick or two, as long as it doesn't intrude into the channel of the steps, then it's fine. This particular coin sold for $2,192.62. Again, it's just mind-boggling money that's just flowing around. Out, out there in the auction world right now. This is a testament to it. We got a 59 here. Uh, another pretty tough date. It's a Philadelphia. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, PCGS Mid-State 67 Full Steps. 
I'm sure a lot of, um, of BU roles, a lot of cherry picking went into finding this one loan example. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a registry set coin. There'd be no other reason why I would invest in this type of coin, knowing that the next 67 full stepper might be at PCGS right now, waiting to get encapsulated. This one here is sold for $3,639.38. Man, just huge money. 48, same deal, same verse as the first. Again, not a incredibly um, appealing coin to invest in, uh, only because I feel like it's a little bit too modern. These are so well struck that the next, you know, high-end grade like this one will show up, okay? And then again, more coins that end up in the population at a 67 will erode at the value of all the other 67s that have been graded. Um, this one right here, again, just a beautiful, very market acceptable coin, custom tailored for a registry set. Um, this one here sold for $6,274.12. Um, again, the market is very strong for these, and we're, we're seeing some renewed interest in Jefferson Nichols, and people are actually taking the plunge in this particular registry. Good for them. 45D, uh, this is our one lone silver wartime nickel inclusion into the list. This one, however, <laughs> look at the grade, 68 full steps. Man, this thing's a beast. Um, it does have some of the, uh, what I call, I don't know, I, I, I classify this type of toning as like album style, but, you know, um, th this, this can be from any sort of uh, storage situation, I would say. Um, usually when I see the, this, this light yellow toning, it's the first color in the progression of the toning stages. Um, so it's a coin that obviously hadn't spent a great deal of time in wherever it was stored in. Um, this one right here sold for $4,632 and 19 cents. A 39, this time we have a reverse of 1940, all right? If you guys are not familiar with what a reverse of 1940 is, it's a modified engraving of the steps, all right? They even modified certain parts of Monticello, or Monticello, however you want to pronounce that. I always say both because someone always says, oh, it's pronounced Monticello, like, you know, the instrument you play, or it's Monticello. So we're just going to appeal to both sides of the coin, all right? No pun intended. Uh, but this 39 is a mid-state 68 full steps. And uh, with the reverse of 1940 on the steps, these step lines are straight and true, all right? Plus, they also have these little butcher's ends here on the sides of the steps. Um, with the, um, the other reverse type, was a reverse of 39, they'll have wavy steps, and they won't have these thick end caps on the uh, steps. Um, so that's the difference. You can tell both apart, you know, under magnification, it's really clear. Um, but this one right here is a, uh, man, this one is just amazing. Sold for $9,031.50. Um, again, more than likely, this is custom tailored for a registry set. Um, it, the reverse of 40 for a 1939 is a little bit more tougher to find, uh, you know, um, based off of the, just some of the data I, I've looked at of this particular reverse type, um, usually you'll see more reverse of 39 of this coin. All right, and the final nickel is going to be a uh, pretty nice semi-key Buffalo 1924S. Um, again, look at the grade. I, this is not something that's going to, like, set the world on fire. Some people would say, you know, it's just, eh, you know, it's kind of like a marginal graded coin. Uh, the coin has a few carbon spots, yada, yada. Um, this one is graded by NGC. It's in an older holder, uh, kind of like what you call soap bar. Um, as you can see from the style of the label, this one is a um, like a 20-year-old la uh, label type. Uh, this one right here is sold for $3,375. Uh, again, um, a 24S, 25S, 26S. These are all coins that anything higher than XF, you're going to pay a pretty good premium on. This is This is one of those right there. All right, uh, well, we did come away with one notable Roosevelt dime on the list after, you know, we finished up last week's Monday Market Report where we had like five or six Roosevelt dimes that totaled just a huge, just chunk of money. All right, you figure it'd be all done. 
but we have one holdover from uh, from last week, and that's the 62D. Uh, just a pleasantly toned, just colorful example. All original, unplayed with. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's getting dry. Uh, but, you know, when coins are this original and untouched, okay, which says a lot, all right? If it's this original with this level, this kind of like skin that exists on the coin... More than likely, it's never, it's not been played with as far as like being in your hand or, you know, just it, it, this is what it's all about. Um, a coin that has been preserved since the day it was minted are few and far between. But these are things that come up in like albums and old collections and stuff like that. And when you find it, you could certainly make money off of it. Some some of the other folks will say, oh, yeah, just dip that thing. You know, it's, it's worth more to me silver wise. However... This is a 68 full bands. All right, so if you dip the coin and you grade it, it comes back like a 66 or 67 because the eye appeal is all gone. You have a coin that's worth like 100 bucks. But this one right here, with all of the extras, all of the originality, just the sharp strike, um, you know, the beauty uh, of the coin, this one sold for $5,962.50. Just imagine all of the stuff that would just go away just the, the monetary appeal with a coin like this if you did dip it you know but th this this will shut up a lot of people that say that oh a coin like this is too ugly it needs to be dipped um me personally i like a really nice blast white coin but there is something about their originality okay tarnish used to be a bad thing as recently as 15 20 years ago it's like let's go for the jewelry dip but w these days it's magnificent it's art and that appeals to a, a completely kind of like different clientele. And because of that, the money just gets ridiculous. Why not take advantage of it? If you don't like it, sell it. And then reap the rewards like this person did. Mercury Dime time. We got a couple of them. Uh, starting with another 45. Uh, the, we did talk about a micro S mint mark last week of a 45. And we got another one here for you. This one is a mid state 67 full bands. Um, San Francisco minted 45s in, uh, in full bands is pretty available. All right. Um, if you need one, they're out there. Maybe not necessarily in a 67, but if you needed, say, a 65 or maybe a 66, have no fear. They are available. And, um, you know, it, it'll be at a much bigger discount than what this one sold for, uh, which was $2,819.25. All right, so uh, compared to the Roosevelt dime that we just just saw, I mean, this is, I mean, wow. I'd rather have the Mercury dime, all right? It's just a obsolete design, Adolf Wyman's Mercury head, um, you know, design is just the coin that I want in a collection and as a future investment. Same with this one, uh, much tougher date, 24D. You know, if, if we were going to kind of like have a parallel to any other coin, the 24D Lincoln is like incredibly tough um, in mint state. But yet we have a Mercury Dime right here that is a 67 full bands. So this is a coin that is a little bit more available in nicer grades than that Lincoln cent. And uh, again, just a beauty. And uh, this one did sell for $13,106.25. Just a beauty, gorgeous coin. Uh, I would be personally excited to own one of these into a typeset. Uh, you know, if it's not a 16D or, you know, a 42 over 1 or whatever it is, this would be a very nice coin. And and I will have, um, I will sleep better at night knowing I have a coin that's going to just increase in value because the populations are just so small on them. All right, we have a uh, we have a couple quarters. Uh, quarters wasn't nearly as you know notable this week, and uh, we actually have one half dollar. All right, so stick around. That's going to be a huge one to cap off this Monday market report. Uh, but we have a beautiful original 1957 Philadelphia. Uh, this one, however, is a variety. It's a Type B reverse, also known as the FS901 in the Cherry Picker's Guide. If you look at the uh, the engraving of this sprig right here um it, it's a little bit more sharp and with the type b reverse you'll actually have a sharp leaf right here that's attached to the a 
so you'll see that right here whereas on a normal type a reverse um the the leaves will be a lot shallower they're more weakly struck looking and they won't be attached the that one leaf won't be attached to the a as strong as this one um this one is mid-state 67 just a beautiful coin uh i know i know of a few people that actually collect the type b c's and d reverses of the washington quarters and they're just looking for high-end examples this one right here sold for eleven hundred thirty two dollars and 88 cents personally I'm going to reach out to a friend to see if they bought this one because this one is right down the rally. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those guys put a bid in on this. All right, 53D. All right, another original coin, this time a NGC Mint State 67. Uh, the T is toned. So if you see that little T, this is that it's an older attempt at exemplifying toning on a coin. That's what this one is. It's all original. It's a... Me, personally, it's a love it or hate it thing because there was a lot of russet browns and olive greens. Uh, generally, those are the least um, uh, desirable color tones for a coin. But this one right here, uh, let's see, what did this thing sell for? $1,132.88. Oh, sorry, I crossed up the numbers. The Type B, actually, I'll go back to it. This one sold for $1,743.75. The 53 sold for $1,132. So there you go. Now, now we're all squared up. Okay, and then we have the 1950D to round out the quarters. We had three quarters. I'm so sorry I screwed that up. <laughs> there it goes. I'm not going to let it ruin my day, though, because these, this Monday market report is just nutso this week. Uh, we got 50D. Again, another high-end registry set example. 67 plus. Uh, CAC certified the, this time around. This one brought home $2,673. And I would say the best way to cap this one off is just with a good old-fashioned candy half dollar. This is a 1970D. As you guys are aware, this is the final 40% silver Kennedy to ever be minted. Okay, and furthermore, this was a coin that was not available for general circulation. This was only available in the mint set. All right, so you're not going to see circulation type 1970Ds. You might find them, find them in a silver or in a half dollar box if you're looking for silver. Okay, that's just going to be someone cracking open that set and then throwing it out there for deposit. Um, but keep in mind, yeah, this is only available in the mid set. Uh, this one right here, man, just huge grade, mid state 67 plus. I know most of them should grade like that because they are all in relatively nice quality. Um, but candy half dollar collectors, especially the registry ones, uh, they're quite a passionate group. And, um, there are a number of them that I know personally, um, that they're all about the Kennedys. So this one right here, just a huge coin. So for, you're not going to guess this, $10,694 and 25 cents. Ooh, man. Uh, okay. Yeah. A five figure candy half dollar. Uh, it doesn't pop up on the auction circuit too much, but, <laughs> uh, this one right here is, is uh, a, uh, just a mind numbing inclusion into this MMR report. And that's going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, just something for you guys to chew on. Um, you know, the market is robust right now. Um, higher end, you know, uh, tier one, tier two graded coins, are uh, all the rage right now uh, as uh, people buy them up. And, uh, you know, as long as the market continues to be hot, we're going to continue to see just incredible gains. Uh, but we'll see. All right. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit that good old bell for instant notification. You know the deal. And uh, as always, Coinolix, we are discovering together. So you guys take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you this weekend for some good stuff. Uh, PCMR report forthcoming, of course. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it. You guys take care, and I'll uh, see you guys on the next coin video. So long.